Yes. It is now recording. You are live. Let's go. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are excited. We're gonna have a great conversation. We have this guy over here, the X Factor. What's up, X Factor? How are you doing tonight? B minor. I tell you this every night and I mean it every night. I am living the dream. I cannot complain about a darn thing. And I think I'm going to continue to be feeling the same way going forward because life is great. How are you feeling tonight is the real question. I'm really excited. One of, I'll tell you, one of my wife's favorite walk-ons is not me. It's you two guys. It's you two guys. Ever since we watched that Gonzaga March to Madness on HBO, my wife was like, man, these guys <laughs> got humor. They got just spirit. And I was like, that's kind of how I was. And she's like, yeah, but you didn't have a man bun like that guy. Yeah, the Martian Madness, that, that was a good little uh, five-episode series we had back in the day. That was a good time. That I, got roasted. Awesome. I got roasted from my house, how dirty it was, how dirty our kitchen was. But, yeah, that was fun when they did that little episode. That was sweet. So, that, Rem, we appreciate you joining us, man. We're just kind of getting this show started with a little energy, a little positivity, kind of just breaking down to people what it's like to be a D1 walk-on kind of the experience of, that we had as players. And then now for me as a coach, I know, I know you're in coaching now. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since Gonzaga. And then we're going to go into a little bit later the time mm -hmm. at Gonzaga. Gotcha. Yeah. So the last uh, two years, I'm uh, trying to get my foot into the coaching door. I've been a graduate assistant on staff at Baylor University. So um, I was in Waco, Texas last two years. I'm uh, just assisting the coaches any way they needed, um, you know, on court video stuff, all that. So uh, it was a good two years. Um, coronavirus obviously stopped our season short as it did for many. Um, but yeah, I might end up going back there depending on what happens with, uh, you know, all this COVID deal and all that. And if, if we have a season and, and whatever shakes out. So uh, as of right now, I'll probably be going back to Baylor and doing a, a third year there. And are you a GA or Adobo or? Yeah, I'm a graduate assistant. So uh, they help take care of my master's program. Uh, can never do too much school. Uh, so finishing up my master's right now. And then, yeah, uh, just kind of try to stick out another year there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of success as long as everything shakes out, everybody stays healthy. One thing that a lot of people don't understand about that GA position is that there is so much work that goes into it. So oh, it's a lot crazy. of my heart, man, that's, that's love. And that's a tough task. And that's one that, Hey, you really got to love hoops to be a part no of it. Doubt. No doubt. Uh, yeah. It tests your love for hoops. That's for sure. You got to do every job, every task asked of you, but uh, it's rewarding at the end of the day, for sure. How was being a walk-on, how did that prepare you for now working on getting into college coaching? How did that prepare, what type of lessons did you learn as a walk-on that you're now using as a coach? Yeah, uh, obviously at Gonzaga, um, it's such a winning culture and such a um, selfless attitude type of thing. So going into my graduate assistant position, I knew that I don't need a lot of glory. I don't need accolades or pats on the back. I'm just uh, trying to help anybody out in any way I can. So kind of took that from my experience as a walk-on. And as a GA, I'm just there to help anyway with the coaches, the players, whatever anybody needs from me, and just kind of uh, be a servant in that aspect. Yeah, Rem, that leads to a question that I have for you, man, because obviously what you said earlier about Gonzaga having that winning culture, you could not be more accurate about that. I mean, you guys are winners. Every single year, you don't have a down year ever. Yeah. What is the secret recipe to that, man? You gotta, <laughs> what, what, what is the secret sauce? What are they putting in the water over there in the Gatorade mix? I don't know. What, 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 is, what is the secret, man? Uh, I think it's a, it's a few things. Um, the coaches obviously have been there a really long time and just um, instilled the culture that winning is the most important thing. Um, and then the players, everybody just loves each other. You don't get a lot of knuckleheads. Um, you hang out one through 15 and you truly care for the guy next to you. So, uh, you know, I know I wasn't the best player. I played the least, but I, I, some of my best friends were the star players and they treated me fairly just like everybody else. So everybody loves each other. Everybody wants to win. And they know, you know, the further you go in the tournament, the better you are, uh, you know, more NBA players, all that, the more successful you'll be. So everybody just buys into what they got going on. 
Yeah, I think you, me, and Brant can definitely appreciate that. I, I can't appreciate the tournament aspect as much, obviously, because I haven't been there. But I think we can definitely appreciate that, understanding that if you're at the end of the bench, forget about that, man. Don't get consumed by that. It is what right. it is. You got to go out there and, and perform. You're still performing. If you're not on the court, it doesn't matter. You still got to perform no matter yeah. what it may be, no matter what they need you to do. So I love and that. You got to have fun with it. You're the captain of having fun on that bench. So you got to enjoy <laughs> you know yourself. Me? He definitely enjoys himself for sure. And I'll tell you, I, I play, when I played, we went to Spokane and we beat the Zags. So I try to work that into most conversations because it's so <laughs> rare. It really it doesn't is. happen often, Rim. And people will say, oh, like the University of Portland, we kind of said, oh, we're the, our rivals, Gonzaga, because we were travel partners. But yeah. people that went to Gonzaga, how's it a rivalry? We kick your ass every time. How's that a <laughs> rivalry, right? But when I yeah. played, we were – it was Blake Stepp, Roni Turioff. So I did play – Was Dickow there? What's that? Did you beat Dickow? No, Dick Al had just left, uh, so I'm a little bit say. younger than Dan, but we, Turioff, Blake Stepp, so they had Great a squad. Team. Great team, yeah. Who was the coach, so I'm not that old. I'm old. <laughs> I'm old compared to some people, but I'm young compared to others. So he, he, we played. It was a crazy atmosphere. This is the old kennel, Rim. So this yeah. is the yeah. old kennel. This is like, I think the year before they moved, maybe two years. 4,000 people, and their old gym just had seating on the two sides. It was like a deep high school gym, but it was – Yeah, nobody behind the hoops, right? Nobody behind the hoops. No, it was just like you shoot layups and almost run into the wall. (coughs) We're up 16. We're up 16 with four minutes left in the game, and they go on a 12-0 run. Capped off, Blake Stepp throws a lob to Turioff, and he's just swinging from the rims. 12-0 run, they cut it to four. Now all of a sudden, there's – we're up four with, like, just under four minutes. Place is going crazy. You know, the atmosphere just oh, yeah. jumping. Oh, yeah. The place is rocking. The place is rocking. Seven seconds left. We're up four. They, we make a bucket to go up four. Their coach calls timeout. Mark Few calls timeout. We're on defense. Gonzaga ball. We're up four. Coach looks down the bench. Minor. Let's go. And I'm, I'm like – I'm ready. So I, I, seven seconds left in the game and we're up four. Coach puts me in. Blake step. I locked down Tony Skinner. He didn't touch the ball, but Blake step came down and drained one from like 29 feet, maybe to go down feet, one. To go down one. So four seconds left. Coach takes me out. So I played three seconds. <laughs> I usually don't tell that part of the story, but I played three seconds, but. Our team, so they took me out, four seconds left, offense, defense. So I played three seconds, and they scored three points, so my plus minus was really bad. <laughs> At least you played in the game they won. That you beat hey, I got my name in the box score. Yeah. Club Trill, shout out. The Shark, shout out. Mark mm-hmm. Titus, Club Trill, one followed by all zeros. And we held them off, and they, but they took me out. They didn't want me shooting the free throws, but they knew I was going to play really hard. I knew what they were going to try to run. But my guy was locked down. So that's my experience in Spokane. The next year, I guarded Adam Morrison. A little different story. Adam, they beat us. But I – and you can look this up. I was looking the other day because I kind of wanted to get my facts right. I played two minutes. I had a steal and an assist in two minutes. So They should have kept you in. Factor that out over a whole game, right, Rim? Come on. Right, right. You got a full 40. You had some good numbers. Yeah. 40 minute production, that was pretty solid. So I I have great memories of those games. Most of the time I didn't play, but it was still an experience, right? So it's an experience. No, no doubt. No doubt. I had a uh, similar kind of experience. I started my senior night against BYU. We were 29 and 0. And, uh, we got up 7-0. I subbed out. We got up like 18 in the first half. We ended up letting them come all the way back, and we lost. So the only game I played in that we lost was against BYU. I think I'm, my record was like 48-1 and one in my career because the rest of them were blowouts I was playing in, of course. But I have a loss now on my record. What was your win-loss record as a starter, Rem? 0-1 now. <laughs> I, I mean, I had, to, I had to call you out on that one, man. <laughs> 
No, yeah. Overall, though, 40, 40 some and one. I should have played in one more game so I could be in the. Uh, if you play 50 games, your win percentage goes into like the counts in the record book. I played 49 games, so I was 48 and one. One game away, or I would have had the best win percentage at Gonzaga. What you guys don't know, though, is the unselfishness of Rem. After that game, Coach was begging Rem to start all the rest of the games. And Rem yeah. was, you know what? I started that game. We didn't win. For the better of the team, I think I shouldn't, Coach. That unselfishness, exactly. that's where it's at exactly. right there. I'm just happy uh, Coach Few's son, his um, second to youngest son, Joe Few, was like, I think my dad should have kept you in the game longer. We were winning while you were in. I'm like, yeah, I respect that, Joe. You can't argue with that. It's true. No, definitely. It's really true. That's awesome, man. Tell us about the guys on the team. So, I mean, people that know the league probably know Sabonis. Um, talked about some of the guys, some of the better people. I mean, talk a little bit about the experience and the relationships you had mm -hmm. at Gonzaga. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to go with the winning culture, the older guys, the vets always take care of the – the freshmen or the guys who transfer in. So, um, you know, as I came in, kind of my big bros were David Stockton, Kelly Olenek, Sam Dower, because um, they were the upperclassmen. They had a house uh, that, that they all lived in together. So they all took care of me. On the road my freshman year, I roomed with Kelly, uh, who ended up being a lottery pick. He's had a really successful career uh, with Boston and now Miami. Uh, I had some good roommates. I roomed with uh, him. I roomed with Rui Hachimura, who also ended up being a lottery pick, kind of a little role reversal. That was my senior year, so I was taking care of Rui. Uh, didn't speak a lick of English. All he really knew how to say was if something was good or not. Um, so, yeah, you just – I mean, you get, you know, great relationships there. Everybody wants to see each other be successful. Everybody still taps in with each other. I got a million group messages with all my boys uh, that I played with, whatever. But And then if you're in the same uh, area, Zags always like to get together and, and do something fun. I know I got three or four teammates on Lake Oswego right now having a good time. Uh, I spent a good portion of quarantine with Domas um, before he went out back to Indy and into the bubble. So, And then obviously the walk-ons are some of my best friends, Dustin Triano, Connor Griffin, Jack Beach. Um, you know, we, we all live together at some point, and that's part of it, too. At Gonzaga, you don't live on your own. You live with your teammates, either in an apartment or in a house, uh, and that really helps with the culture and everything because we all spend a lot of time together under one roof outside of basketball just doing regular life stuff. What a lot of people don't know about, and they might allude to it, but they really can never understand and, and unless they go through it, is that bond that the walk-ons form, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, oh, like yeah. clear, 1 through 15, everybody's tight. Everybody's close. You can hang out with anybody just the same. That bond that you get with those walk-ons, though, I'm talking about going out there, being on scout team together. Because yeah. that's when you really get to compete, you know? And being right. able to compete with people, that really, that really strengthens the bond. Being on scout team, doing the A, you know what I mean? Whatever kind of walk-on yep. footage, you guys talk about it together. You're like, man, this was BS. But later on, you really, you know, appreciate it. Like, okay, I understand my role. I get 100%. it. hundred percent. remember when this happened. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's a huge bond, man. That's a great point. The tougher the things you go through with anybody in life, the stronger your bond forms. So walk-ons, you, know, uh, you know, you just bond through that mutual suffering of some aspects of college basketball. But now I, those are my dearest and closest friends. Look at the three of us right now. Three walk-ons, right? Yep. Former walk-ons and a current walk-on. Bonding over what? Over being walk-ons. We're here, gathered a congregation of walk-ons because we were or are walk-ons. It brought us together, and that's what Kyle Troops does. Yes, sir. Did we lose Brant? Brant, did I'm we lose here, him? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Were you fixing your lights? I saw you get up for a second. You were fixing your lighting. Huh? I fixed the lighting in here. It's a little, okay, little good. Bit dark, but this gives me some weird shadows, so we'll see. Brian, you look good, man. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, you, you look make, great. You make lighting look good. I appreciate that. You guys are too much. Too much. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, I had to wear a hat tonight because I haven't got a haircut since season got over and quarantine started. So I'm just really growing my flow out at this point. You're still you still had some flow. When you were at GU, if you guys don't know, Google, I don't know what comes up when you Google Rim back in this man bun, but you had a solid man bun during that documentary i sure did it was a, a 
I think I ended up cutting 16 inches off it when I was when it was all said and done. Donated it. Uh, yeah, it was a funny experience doing that. I I started doing it with two other walk-ons. We were like, let's just grow all our hair out. And uh, me, Dustin Triano, Connor Griffin, we all grew it out. Uh, we all got to the man bun stage. Mine lasted a little longer than yours, but or than uh than Connor's. But uh. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is <laughs> yeah. the man bun that we're alluding to. This is legendary, man. I had some crazy. It got even longer. You had it even longer than this? Yeah. I mean, I used to play with a bun uh, <laughs> my senior year in 2017. Yeah. That's crazy, man. I know there's a lot of maintenance. No, it was. Waking up in the morning with hair in your face and all the shampoo you got to go through. It was different. But shoot, as a walk-on, you any way you can stand out, right? That man bun helped saw. me out. I don't know if you saw the hair I used to have, man. I had this big old blonde mop, and it yep. was crazy. Every morning, I'm talking about at least 15 minutes maintenance to get it at least somewhat okay to walk to out. To stand up, yeah. Yeah, I remember I used to see it flop around when you're, you'd be dancing in pregame or whatever. Man, I'm telling you, that was, that was crazy. When I look back at it, I'm like, man, I don't know how I walked around with that on my head. I'm but. the same way. I'm like, I have no idea how. Like, this is the longest my hair has been since I cut it, uh, all the hair off. I have no idea how I lasted that long with the band bun. That's crazy. I got this and I'm trying to get a haircut. So I can only imagine how I was feeling before. I just miss my barber in Waco, Texas. He does such a good job. I don't feel loyal going to anybody else. I'm going to just wait till I get back out to Waco and then I'm going to let him get me right. That's one of the things that you can never go back on, man. You're yeah. a barber. You, you know, you feel terrible. You feel like you cheated if you go to another barber. You really do. You really do. I saw a funny video on Twitter about, uh, about that same thing and uh, running into your barber at the grocery store after you get a fresh lineup. They had me rolling. It was so funny. He's like, hey, that wasn't me. I know you went and cheated on me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. When, when are you headed back to Waco? Uh, I'm going to probably go end of July. And then hopefully more decisions will be made with the gym and if things are opening up. Um, but I figured if things aren't really rolling out there right now, so – came and uh, spent as much time with my family as I could these last couple of weeks before I go back. So I'll be in the Northwest enjoying uh, these blue skies we have right now. And then Texas is just a, a sauna at all times in the summer. So, so you're, you said you had some guys on Lake Oswego. Is, is that Connor or who's it's, in uh, this? Kyle Wilcher, um, okay. his wife, Eric McClellan, and uh, Jeremy Jones, they're all out there right now. So I've been kind of uh, cooped up in my house the last week or so. Uh, I was traveling a little bit, so I didn't want to go around people if I got anything from the airport or whatnot. So I might make my way out there at some point while they're all out there. I think the best refuge from the quarantine is the water, man. Like staying in the house all the time. Like, obviously, like you said, you kind of feel bad going around people. So, like, yeah. any kind of, like, interaction is tough. You can go out on that water in the lake, and you want to talk about social distancing. That's, yeah. that's the way to do it. Get on no, that that's boat. Ideal. That that's seat. ideal. Yeah, no, that's that's the best. We've been uh, – I was in Chicago for a little while, but, of course, you know, everything is crazy now, so I'm back in Indiana. Yeah. And we got a lake in my hometown. I'm from Michigan City, Indiana. And uh, we got a little lake there. That's about it. Like, that's all else I can really – if I'm not working or working out, you're going to find me there. Because otherwise, I'm going to go crazy. I can't be in this house all the time. And that's no, I'm with you. I spent a little time uh, in Indiana. We went to Geist Reservoir, Reservoir uh, outside of Indianapolis. And then uh, we, went, we actually went to Chicago, and we spent a day on the lake. We rented a boat and went out there for one of the days. So That's where it's at right there. For you sure. Know, what a good time. You go out on that playpen in Chicago, and you just, you just mess around. I'm yeah. not going to say too much because we're on the recording Zoom, but, yeah, you can go out there and have a great time. No doubt. Out, sh Chicago was so beautiful. The only other time I've been there was uh, this past February, and it was freezing cold. I didn't prepare. I didn't have a big enough jacket. I was miserable at night. Uh, but once I got out there this summer, it was beautiful. It was, it's one of my new favorite cities for sure. Dude, you got to be a trooper to get through that winter. And that winter starts early and it ends late. Uh Yeah. Spokane, uh, where Gonzaga's at, Spokane snows, but it doesn't get that cold. That was a different type of cold when I was there in, in uh, February. Man, we had a polar vortex not too long ago. It was, <laughs> you want to talk about cold. 
Yeah, I hope they get you guys some good gear, like some real snow coats and boots and everything. I you mean, gotta be a warrior to. out Otherwise, there. We're, we're gonna be popsicles, man. We can't get yeah. on the court. <laughs> we're gonna be outside the arena, frozen. Yeah, no doubt. Tongue doesn't. Give us your best one of one of or your best. Oh, you change locations. I'm trying to change it up. I'm trying to keep it going, mix it up. And that way, you never know okay. which where I'm gonna be at. Okay, okay. What's what's the question? Best memory as a Zag. Ooh, oh there my a god! Couple, couple memories. Yeah, I so many of them. Starting on senior night was one of them uh, for sure. When Coach Few told me in the locker room um, at shoot around that morning, that was one of the, my most memorable times. But uh, advancing to the Final Four has got to be number one, just because never been done in school history. Uh, we kind of felt like a team of destiny that year that we were supposed to be there and that we were the best team in the country. So winning that Elite Eight game against uh, Xavier and clinching and just knowing we had done it for the first time, we did it for Coach Few, the whole Spokane community, um, all the Zag fans that have been loyal for all those years. That was a different type of feeling. A lot of tears of joy were spread, a, a great celebration in the locker room, and um, a little bit of fun when we got back to Spokane. What, what year was it, the first Final Four? 2017. And they were good enough to go back last year uh, before they ran into Tech in the Elite Eight. That was a great game. And then, you know, I, I was very confident they had a good enough team to get back there this year to the Final Four. So, And I know they're stacked with recruits coming in uh, this upcoming season. So it's just rinse, uh, rinse repeat, recycle, all that. They, they just keep them coming and they keep it rolling. I got to get a final four in, man. I got to get one. I got to get a tournament, a final four. I got to get yeah. something, man. The tournament is special, man. Like, my first year, we uh, were number one seed, lost to Wichita State, uh, which was just horrible. We had such a great team. Lost. Next year, we go lose in the first round again. And then we advanced to the Sweet 16, finally, which was a big deal. They hadn't done it in, like, five years. Sweet 16. Uh Oh, no, we go Elite Eight, Sweet 16, then Final Four. And then now it's kind of just expected by everybody that's there. It's like if you don't get to that Elite Eight, Final Four, it's not, it's not a successful year in their minds. So they, the, it's just changed to such a winning culture. Man, I got, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, just the, end, the ending to your season. So, like, you know what I mean? Our, um, this, the previous year, obviously this past year, you know, with, with, with COVID, we didn't get to do anything. The year before mm -hmm. that, we went to the CBI, which was, like, the first postseason tournament that DePaul had been to in, in forever, ever. And, like, yeah. that was awesome for us. You know what I mean? Because we're like, man, you know what I mean? We're, we're turning the program around. We're going from no postseason to something. Right. Like, you guys are going to, like, Final Four or bust. Yeah. that I mean, they're, they're trying to win a ring at this point. I don't even think Coach would be satisfied with the Final Four. I think he wants a ring. He's – I mean, he's – a cemented himself as one of the best coaches in college basketball history but getting that ring just changes everything for everybody and their reputation you know final four he's been there now now he wants to win that ring that's so symbolic like i think that you can go on because it's it's two completely different types of successes here like i think you could go on to become a billionaire and do like amazing things and that final four that that ring that, yep. that championship ring is still going to be one of your best moments ever like because no there's just so much work that goes into that. Nobody – yeah, you, if you're not a part of it, you don't really understand how much work goes into it. That's blood, right. sweat, and tears right there, so. Right. That's what, uh, you know, Baylor never been to a Final Four as well. We are having a great year. One of, it was Coach Drew's best regular season ever um, this season. And I think we had the makings, especially defensively, to get there. Uh, obviously, you need a little bit of luck in the tournament. You need a good draw. But uh, that, that COVID hit, man – a little different, but, you know, hopefully things play out and they can figure out safe ways to play games this year for college sports because I know me, I'm dying without watching anything. You know, the TBT was a good refresher, NBA coming back, but college athletics, there's nothing better. Man, the craziest part is if you have that killer regular season, you do everything right, you're number one seed, and then you're Virginia and you get upset in the first round by UMBC. Yeah. You want to talk but then you, know, you come back the next year and you win it all. And you right? win it. Like, could you write it any better? Talk about uh, an incredible coach. That, I mean, yeah. Tony Bennett's one of the best, no question about it. But he is. Let's give he something is. away. There's some people in here watching. Let's give some, some – first person who can tell me where 
the coach that Rim works for now was when he hit or when they hit the memorable shot, right? You know what I'm talking about, right, Rim? I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. So is there anybody that his knows? His brother hit the shot. When what? When his brother hit the famous shot. Well, his brother hit the famous shot. What school yeah. was that? Anybody know? Where were they? What school were they at? See if anybody drops that, because that was one I remember as a kid watching that. The full court pass, perfectly executed, the pitch back. Yep. That was a that was a heck of a play they drew up. Some of these young guys watching have no clue. It was not Duke, Dylan. I think he almost got like an SB or something for that shot. He was in the running. Not North Carolina, not Kansas. My you guys are thinking Blue Kansas. Bloods. It's a, it's a mid major. Not <laughs> DePaul, not, great guess. Traditional no. power. Andrew is just coming up with all sorts of answers tonight. Valpo. Valparaiso. Good you old got it. Coach Pretty Drew's cool. brother just got a uh, he got the head coaching job at Grand Canyon um, this past offseason. He's going to kill it there. He's going to do a really good job. Grand Canyon's a place you can win for sure. Definitely. They got great fan support, good location. They're in a good conference. They're going to turn it around for sure. And I stayed out at Grand Canyon when I was a senior in high school. We played a tournament out there in Arizona, and I uh, we stayed at Grand Canyon, uh, their hotel over there. Great pool too, so of course I could. Good, do good. That's important. You got to have a pool if you're in Arizona, no question. You got to have fun. Yeah. We got more trivia or what? Yeah, we got a, we got another one. Let's, you want you got one? You want to throw? I'll throw out another one, unless anybody, unless one of you two guys got a good one. I got one here. Um, what was Nolan Richardson's Arkansas team's nickname? Nolan Richardson's Arkansas basketball team. What was their nickname? That's a tough guy, right? The there. Razorbacks. It basketball. is the Razorbacks. The Razorbacks. But what was the nickname of that team that Nolan Richardson coached? So Dylan, they are the Razorbacks, but the nickname, not the mascot, but what was the nickname? You got to be a dog to play for that team. You got to be mentally strong as ever to play for that team. Nolan Richardson. Hog. Nope. Hog. Nope. That's not what we're looking for. They had a nickname of that squad. I, I love this. I really, I love their brand of basketball. I really do. That's kind of how we're trying to play at Pacific is just that same mentality. It's a mentality. That's mm -hmm. what he brought was just that mentality of every game for the whole game, this is what it's going to be like. So that's the description. So what is it going to be like for the other team? That's your clue is what was it going to be like for the other team? What were they going to get? You know how many people would quit? Like, especially today, you know how many people would quit? They say, forget about this. I'm transferring right now. I'm not waiting yep. to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Andrew, 40 minutes of hell. Andrew's on fire tonight. Not only is he uh, – Amazing at the edits, but he's killing the trivia. He's a man of many talents. Great job, Andrew. Hey, Pat, did you play with uh, Pistol Wojcik? Yeah, yeah, my boy Pax. Uh huh. Yeah, okay, I thought we, so. We still kick it in the city because he goes to Loyola now, so he's just yeah. right away about twenty minutes. That's, that's little bro. His dad was uh, real close with our staff, and then his dad was on our staff uh, for one or two years while I was there. So him and Denim look like my little bros. Pac's dad is the GOAT, man. Like, literally yeah. everybody, all types of people in college hoops. Hey, you know Pax? Hey, you know Mr. Wojcik? Like, he's yeah. all over the place. That's Mr. Worldwide in the college hoops. Yeah, their family's awesome. Man, they're great people. They're great, great people. Went to La Lua with them, and then, yeah, Chicago. That's Panthers. what I thought. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. You guys had a squad, man. Together. Always. Talk about dynasties. <sighs> I'm telling you. How many pros were on that team with you, Pont? I had three NBA players. We had Jaron Jackson, Jr. He's on the Grizzlies now. We have Brian Bowen. He plays for the Pacers. And then we have uh, Jordan Poole, who's on the Warriors. Ooh, and that's swaggy uh, Jordan Poole, man. That's the swaggiest dude in the whole world. No question. You want to talk about, like, like people wear short shorts. I wear my short short. That dude, I'm talking about, like, full thigh. This dude was wearing full thigh with the, with the ankle bracelets on and everything, man. This dude was yeah. all like down. That's a good dude yeah. right there. But yeah, you guys all stay in touch. You, your uh, teams, you staying 
in close touch. That team was so close. So we still got the group chat too. Like everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whenever like JP comes, when the Warriors play the Bulls, tickets. When, you know yeah. what I mean? Darren comes out, take like, you know what I mean? We're yeah. like this. That's awesome. Best place that you guys traveled, either one of you, where's the best place the game's taken you? Ooh. So I'll probably you. the Bahamas. Did you guys play in the Battle for Atlantis? Yeah, we played Battle for Atlantis, and then either that or last summer we did a, a little tour in Italy, which was phenomenal. So, that, shoot, it's taken – everywhere I've traveled has been because of basketball, basically, so – uh, but Bahamas was one of my favorite. We didn't even win the tournament, but the water slides, the beach, it was a good time. Yeah, you, you took the words out of my mouth about Italy. Last summer, we did Paris and Rome. That was Ooh. so cool, man. Paris and Rome was amazing. We were out there for like two weeks, too. So we got to see all types of stuff, taking the culture. I'm a huge food guy, so I got to eat all types of food. I'm with you. I'm a foodie till I die. Dude, I'm talking about – if you're in Chicago, I got some spots for you, man. They've got some right. heat out there. When I say heat, I mean it. I went to uh, Greek town. I'm, I'm, I'm a little Greek. You're Greek too? Yeah, I'm a quarter. I'm not – I mean, I claim I'm Greek. My dad, uh, his, his family is, like, super Greek. My mom's Heinz 57. They're, like, everything under the sun. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my fake Greek name is Remo Giovanni Battista Castaño. That is beautiful. You ever, you, you guys ever go back? You go to Greece ever? No, uh, they went a few summers ago. I couldn't go because of summer hoops. But uh, my dad's well is way more like into the culture at this point. Um, he's been everywhere. He's done it all. That's but awesome. That's I had to get the lamb chops out there. Sorry, you said what? I had to get the lamb chops out in Chicago. Oh man, I'm telling you, man. I go to Greek islands out there in Greek town. That's where I went, Greek islands. Dude, those guys are top notch, man. I'm talking about Unreal. first time out there. Unreal. It was so good. I get this big lamb shank, man. They take care of me out there. Cause I go, I've been there a billion times. So yeah. Big old lamb shank with some orzo red sauce over it. You got um, uh, uh, octopus for the appetizer. Yes, sir. That's authentic. You need it. What do we got now? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Who's got let's see, has anybody got questions? You guys can drop your questions if you want below. We can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. We're all about the interaction. We're all about the people. We talk about this all the time. Be yeah. The next factor show, we're for the people. What inspired the show? That's a good question. I would like to know what inspired the show. I would like how you guys linked up. Like, First time I saw this guy, the PK-80, which was the tournament that they held out here in Portland. And me being a walk-on, but now a college coach, I was like, I got to get tickets to watch the PK-80. So I got tickets to all the games, and it was University of Oregon, go Ducks. And they're playing DePaul, and I saw the X Factor. I know you're a Husky guy probably, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. That's all right. Not everybody can be a winner. Um, <laughs> but I saw him dancing. I saw him just bringing that energy, that positive vibe, the spirit. And I was like, this guy, I got to connect with this guy. So I think I hit him on Twitter. I think it was Twitter was the first place. I was like, man, let me get in touch with this guy. And then we've just been shooting it back and forth, dropping texts back and forth and try to get this show cracking because we want to just spread a little positivity, a little positive energy, a little excitement and just trying to show people that, you know, even if you, the walk on mentality is so crucial to life, you know, mm -hmm. because you learn. You can work really hard. That still doesn't mean you're going to get to play. Yeah. You can work. You can be the hardest working guy. That doesn't mean you're going to get to play. And that's a life lesson for people. Some people think, oh, if I work hard, I'm going to be the best player. And it's like, well, that's not always the way it works. Sometimes you have to work your ass off just to get a jersey. You right. Know? You right. have to play 49 games. Just to be a part of it. Just to be a part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. My guy, Justin Lunt, my head coach that I work for now. I know Coach Lunt real well. He wanted to make sure I gave you a shout out because he said, "Hello, oh, what is Rim? I really tried to recruit him. And I was this close to playing for him at UPS. I was like, that's where I was going to go. I was like, I was ready to go there. And then, uh, shoot, things just shook out at Gonzaga at, at the last minute. And they gave me the chance to walk on. But I love Coach Lunt. Like, he always, uh, you know, came and, and watched my games and recruited me. He was awesome.
And my dad played at UPS when he was – and obviously he was there before Pacific. But you got to tell him I said what's up for sure. Oh, no doubt. He's, he's one of the good guys. I would have loved to play because that 40 minutes of hell we were just talking about, yeah, our, we pressure relentlessly. We averaged 104 a game last year. And we weren't very good yet. So we really – Tempo, tempo, tempo. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. For sure. Well, <laughs> let's see. We got a couple other trivia, a couple questions. Let's see. Dylan, want, do we trust Dylan enough to unmute him, Pont? Uh, you know what? I say that we go ahead and unmute Dylan. Dylan, be on your best behavior, my guy, because we're posting this on YouTube. Dylan, we're going to trust that you're going to not say something ridiculous. Here we go. Here's your unmuted time of glory. All right, Pantelis. Yes, sir. So I want to ask you what it was like in, like, high school um, to play with who you played with. And I know you want to – I think you want to ring there, right, in high school? Mm-hmm. Yes, What we was did. that like? Yeah, so uh, to the merit of your first question, this is the word that I use when I talk about this, extremely humbling. Very, very, very humbling to play with those guys. This is the reason. I come from a pretty small city in Indiana, right? Not a whole lot of people – come out of here and play college hoops or, you know, especially professional at the next level. So I was one of the better players growing up. I was used to being one of the better players on my team. Um, La Lu came around and, you know, we have uh, different tiers of basketball, La Lu. So we have JV, we got the regular varsity team, and then we got, you know, that team, our national team, right? Yeah. And we recruit and we do all that good stuff. So I was one of the better players on the JV team my freshman year, moved up, one of the better players, one of the best players on the regular varsity team. My senior year, I got the call up to that nationally ranked team. So I'm understanding I'm not going to be the best player. You know, I'm, I'm realistic. I know I'm not going to be the best player. I'm thinking I'm going to go out there and do something, right? I'm thinking I'm going to, you know, work my tail off, get better, get some tick, right? Get some playing time. Um, not the case. And I understood exactly why. When you see – I'll, I'll share a story with you. Somehow, some way, we're playing pickup. I get a fast break. I'm running. I didn't make the steal, whatever. Somebody stole the ball. I run, get the ball out the pass, whatever. I got a fast break. Now, I got space. I'm thinking. I got plenty of space. I'm going to just lay the ball up, right? I see Jaron coming back. He's running. He's moving. This is a mobile, like, Jaron is a mobile dude. He's running fast. So I'm like, all right, I have time to finish. I know I can finish, but let me finish on the other side anyway, just to make sure. You know what I mean? I'm going to protect the ball with the rim. He's not going to block the shot. So I go, whatever two steps, try to finish on the other side. This dude, Jaron, jumps all the way from this side of the basket to the other side of the basket. Boom, boom. I'm talking about glasses, my stuff. That's when I realized, in front of a bunch of college coaches too, right, who I idolized my whole life. I finally got the chance to meet these people. They just saw me got embarrassed. So I'm like, okay, you know, humbling experience. And there were plenty of experiences like that. I'm not going to share yeah. all of them. I could sit here and talk all day about them. Extremely humbling That's how I'm going to put it. I realized that uh, – I probably was not going to be a professional basketball player when I played on that team. But um, to the merit of your second question, yes, we did win a ring. That was one of the most memorable experiences of my life. I got the ring in my, uh, in my room. I got a little, what's it called? I, whatever. I had my, uh, my jerseys framed from there. Got them up in my room. One of the most memorable experiences of my life. So playing for that team changed my life for the better 110%. Yeah. Good job, Dylan. Way to bring some good question to the show, man. Thanks for jumping on. Dylan, they should add you as the third uh, host on this show. That was a great <laughs> question. We need him. We need you, Dylan. We're going to sign you an in internship. Yeah. Hey, he's been loyal. He's been here every show we've been on. He's been chatting every up. time. Love it. Appreciate you, Dylan. Yep. Loyalty goes a long way. I think mm -hmm. that's something I learned as a walk-on. you got to be loyal. Like an assistant coach, right, Rim? You're getting into coaching. I've found as an assistant coach, loyalty. And I've been talking to a lot of college coaches. You have to have your head coach's back and try to make his job easier. Same thing oh, as a walk-on. Same thing as a walk-on. You have to try to bring more production than you do problem. So you're having to help the team GPA. You're having to win the sprints. You're having to do all that stuff just to be on the team just have a uniform, right? Not to be yep. a player, not to get the starting role or anything like that. Just to have a jersey, you have to bring all that extra stuff. Mm -hmm. I think there's another reason why 
kind of to the merit of the question that was asked earlier of why, why do we start this show? I want to share my story, not just my story, though, all walk-on stories. Because people see us at the end of the bench, typical college hoops fans, right? Your average person who's watching on the TV. They don't really know. They just say, oh, hey, look at these guys. They're not playing. Yeah, they're probably terrible basketball players, and I doubt they do anything in practice and blah, blah, blah. That's not the case, even close. You know what I mean? We're Walk-ons get buckets, man. Walk-ons get buckets. You know the thing that is crazy? People think, and I'm sure you used to get it all the time, too. Regular, like, people that don't play college hoops think that they will come out there and destroy us. Like, they think yeah. that we're just terrible basketball players or something. I like, know. We work out every day. If I went to the rec center, anytime I went to the rec center at Gonzaga, like, people were playing me for my spot. I'm like, I'm just trying to come out here and hoop, man. Like, you don't have to pick me up full court. Like, can I just, like, run around and have a good time? But everybody just wants to prove they're better, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, we're the ones with the jersey on, so. I got that a lot. A lot of times guys would be like, hey, I was better than you were when we were in eighth grade and you played division one. I, I was better than you. And it's like, dude, talk is cheap, right? It's about production, right? right? Production. Mm-hmm. And everyone says ideas. Ideas are pretty cheap, right? Like it's about execution. You know, people, so I have a tournament in Las Vegas. That's at the Westin, Lake Las Vegas, stay and play, three courts in the ballroom. And people are like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. I, I, well, I thought of an idea like that. And I'm like, well, ideas are kind of cheap, right? It's about yeah. execution that matters. But it's the not action. Coming up with ideas. All yeah. types of people had all types of billion-dollar ideas, I'm sure. You don't put it to action, it's worthless. You didn't do nothing. What did you do? You just thought about something. <laughs> yeah. Graham, tell us about what it was like. So, you guys, when you win the Elite Eight, you get to cut down the regional nets. Isn't that right? You got to cut yep. down nets. And yep. Dylan wanted to know what, what the locker room was like when you guys made it to the Final Four. Oh, it was awesome, man. Uh, you know, so I, I always call it a team of destiny. Like, from the beginning of that summer till we got lost in the national championship, like, we knew we were going to be there. Um, you know, we just talked about it every day. So the emotions for everybody, the coaches, the managers, everybody who would put in time, all the players, it was just like a relief. Like, oh, we did it. You know, everybody was congratulating each other, taking pictures. Um, I got a million pictures from that down my camera roll. Um, but, yeah, everybody just was so proud of each other. And we knew that wasn't the, the complete goal, but we knew that was one of our goals. You know, win conference win a uh, conference tournament, go to the Sweet 16, Final Four, National Championship. And so we got to where we wanted to be. We fell short against North Carolina, unfortunately. But advancing that Final Four is one of the most special locker room moments ever. Uh, just seeing everybody hug each other, embrace each other, and just tell each other how proud we were to be on that team together. That had to be incredible, man. Just to- It was. Just and where was the Elite Eight? Where 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 were you guys at when you guys won? The Elite Eight was in San Jose, and then uh, Final Four was in Phoenix. So we stayed relatively close to home. I was there, man. I was in the arena. I was, I was there, man. I I had on green for Oregon. I was pulling in the national championship game. I was pulling for Gonzaga, and I'm a pilot, so it was tough. But I was pulling for Gonzaga in the national championship game. That means a lot. That does. Because in the West Coast Conference, so I, was work, I worked that into most conversations I had down there in Phoenix. Oh, well, when I was playing, we beat Gonzaga, you know? Yeah. Like, how old are you? Are you as old as John Stockton? <laughs> what, who was your funniest teammate, Rim, at Gonzaga? Oh, my gosh. Funniest teammate? Andrew wants to know who your funniest teammate was. Shoot. Our locker room was full of clowns, man. Uh, Josh Perkins is one of the funniest humans to ever set foot on this earth. Um, if you get a chance to even watch his interviews or anything he ever did at Gonzaga, he's funny. Um, but we had so many uh, international players that would just unintentionally be funny, like with their accents or their mispronunciations. Um, one of my closest friends, Shemek Karnowski, seven foot, uh big beard Polish guy like just his accent like was the funniest thing to everybody in the locker room Rui could hardly speak English he would just say good to anything uh you know we had so many funny memories in there but I think Josh Perkins is hands down one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life awesome that that had to be 
just cracking up. That's what it showed on the documentary that you guys were on, just cracking jokes. Yeah, got to be ourselves at all times. That was fun. That had to have been tough for Rui, man. Like, how do you, like – I mean, he's a hooper, so, like, he understands the game, right? And, like, yeah. he, can, he can obviously, like, put things into motion. But that's got to be so hard to, like, learn the plays and you barely speak English. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's yeah. hard. I mean, people don't, like – so many people nowadays, you don't play your freshman year and you transfer. Rui had the language barrier. I think he played four minutes a game, and he didn't even play in every game that year. Like, there was games he didn't even check in. And, uh, you know, kudos to him. He stuck with it. He put learning English as first priority so he could, you know, communicate a lot better. And then he just trusted the entire process, played well his sophomore year. And then junior year, he breaks out and goes lottery. So uh, testament to him and his hard work and just sticking with it. It's not easy to go to another country. I always think of myself like, imagine me having to go to Japan, learn the language, learn basketball. Like coaches are on you and you stick with it and go lottery. Um, oh my gosh, that's a great picture. Look at Shemek. You can see the man bun a little bit there. But yeah, Rui, man, he's he's such a hard worker. He figured it out. I'm really proud of that kid. Did you guys used to wear suits to travel? Yeah, we would wear. We would just dress up. Uh, it was just kind of like a team decision. We always wanted to look nice. By the end of it, it got a little less uh, strict on the dress code. But we always looked like to look nice on the travel. Dude, I cannot tell you how much I love that. That is so yeah. – that's awesome. Dude, that's why you guys win. Like, that, you know what I'm saying? That's why It's you part guys, of it. It's part of it. Players. And every time you win on the road uh, – so the reward is we wear our sweats back on the plane if you win. So then the locker room goes crazy or the bus goes crazy. Everybody's yelling, sweats on the plane. <laughs> and then you just throw your sweats on and you're comfy on the ride home. Oh, my goodness. You can't beat that, man. That's, you want to talk about yeah. good culture. It's the little things. I think we got joined by Justin Lunt now, Rem. Looks like he's tuning in. My guy, so, Coach Lunt. Wade has a question for you, Rem. Who was the hardest player to play against on your team? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I used to get switched on the big men a lot. I, I'm not going to count them. They're all, I mean, going to score on me 10 times out of 10. Um, Somebody a lot of people don't know is David Stockton, uh, who's actually a former walk-on. David, uh, obviously, his dad's John Stockton, so people used to tell him he's only there because his dad or think that's the only reason he got his chance at Gonzaga. Um, but he was by far the craftiest player I've ever played against in my life. He'll do things that, like, he'll get you by your arm, he'll hook you, he'll do all this stuff. Uh, he's about... 5'9", five, 5'10", five, on a good day, but long arms and the toughest person you'll ever meet on the basketball court. He's had such a successful career uh, after Gonzaga. He's gotten even better every year. I think he might be all-time assist leader in the G League at this point. He's played like four seasons only there. So David Stockton could always get his way with me when I was carding him. That's awesome. Coach wants to know if you're in the man cave and where I the am. legend is. I'm in the man cave. My dad's upstairs right now. Uh, unfortunately, COVID ruined War of the Border and camp this year, or else maybe we would have seen you around War of the Border, Coach Lunt. Uh, many good times down here in this basement and outside uh, during these summer months, usually. That's big time, man. I always stress the importance of having a man cave. You've got to have some kind of place where you can go and just do you. Don't worry oh, about yeah. I don't know how many times my mom tried to, like, turn this into, like, a fashionable like basement. I mean, I'll give you guys a little panoramic, but we just have stuff everywhere. Oh like, man, memorabilia everywhere. It's just kind of my dad and my touch on it. So, dude, you got to protect that with your life. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff up and down here. That's special. Yeah, vinyl playing, yes sir. Uh, my dad, so he gets out the old record player and he spins vinyl, so he won't play. He won't plug into an ox cord or anything. He just plays old records and vinyl the whole night. It's a pretty unique feel down here. Man, you're taking it back back in the day. For That's sure. Awesome. You're making me want to remodel my house. I got to make something like that in my house. Yeah, think of all the stuff you collect. Like, 
you know, I started doing it because my dad has this man cave, but I kept, I, I got jerseys from guys, shoes, everything, um, because I knew I wanted to have a man cave in my house one day. You'll have some memorabilia. Some of the guys you played with are doing pretty well in that, what is it, the National, National Basketball Association? Yeah, they're doing all right. <laughs> few guys, few guys made it. So you played with Pargo and Perkins? Not Pargo. Uh, Par no, uh, just Perkins. Perkins. Perkins came in. I played two years with Perkins. His first year he got hurt real badly. Actually, I played three years with him. Uh, t talk about selfless. He was as selfless as they come. He'd rather get an assist than a bucket any day of the week. But uh, he was a great leader. He never, uh, you know, complained. Just played his role always. He, and he uh, finished his season in the G League with the Texas Legends. I think he's going to have a good professional career, whether it's in Europe or uh, maybe he gets a chance in the NBA. But he's a great teammate. Man, that transition of – and obviously, you know, and I had a couple people that this happened with as well. Like, one year you're playing with them, you're rooming with them, you're on the road with them, you're with them all the time. The next year, they're in the NBA. It's like, wow. Yeah. Like, that, that's crazy. They go from a college standout to making millions of dollars like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a to that hard work they've been putting in for, for years. And you're happier than ever for them because, like, that's your guy. So, it's so right. cool to out there. You always like to see your people succeed more than you do yourself. Like, I'd way rather see all my teammates make it to the NBA and be successful before I'm successful. It just means more when you see those guys do it, you know? For sure. That's, one of the, that's the best part about coaching, too, for sure. And as you're getting – working into the coaching business, now I'm getting to see kids that I coached now coaching and mm -hmm. getting married and having kids and all that stuff. So I love what you said about – seeing other people be more successful because there's so much negativity in our world right now. So yeah. positivity, seeing other people be successful, cheering on your friends and teammates. It's what it's about for sure. Definitely. Anybody else got a question? Anybody else want to fire something off to one of these guys? I'm here all week. I I'll got be around for you. Did anybody else see the show this evening? We were giving away stuff. Okay, Dylan, let's see. What's your question? You got one? Good one. Here we go. Fire away. Do I need to unmute you again? Let's see. All right, Pantel, so I have a trivia question for you. A trivia, but you're going to put me on the spot. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> yeah. He flipped the switch on you. He flipped the script. Here we go. Yeah, I hope I After know it. They call home easy. games. This year, what was the hype song played? After the intros, the hype song played the hype after song, the every game. It's the same song. After the intros, you're talking about. I, I don't know if it's after the intros or not, but the same song was like before or after it every single time. Are you talking about before the starting lineups or after the starting lineups? It might have been after. I don't know. I feel like it was the same song every time. I'm not – do you know – are you asking me because you know and you're going to give yeah. me the answer? Tell us, Dylan. Don't keep us in suspense. Tell yeah, us. Let us know, Dylan. Oh, he's playing it. Hot. Let's hear it. I can't hear a thing. You hear it? Are you playing hot? hot? Yeah, they played it like every time like. after the intros. Oh, well, there you have it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, thought, I, have, I don't know. I thought that I was like something you by Young Thug. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's one. Yeah. I didn't hear it. Were you playing it? Yeah. I heard a snippet of it. You, I was pretty quick, Ram. You should be on Name That Tune. <laughs> that was quick. I, yeah, I give you props for that. Appreciate well, yeah, it. hot. That's the one. What, what do they call the when the Zags start jumping? What is that like the – Oh, Zombie Nation. Zombie Nation, man. That place gets rocking. They're going to have to replace the bleachers at some point. I, there's no way they would stand like 10 more years of that. We got a good question in the chat here. If you want to be a walk-on, how do you do that? There's a lot of different avenues to do that. And I, every single walk-on story is different. Like for me, I was a preferred walk-on, so I was recruited to go to DePaul as a walk-on. 
other people go to tryouts and grind the tryouts out. Like there's a bunch of different ways. Um, I was a preferred walk on, so I was recruited. And actually my head, the head coach at La Lamira at the high school that I went to took an assistant coaching job at DePaul. So when I was looking at my options, that was a no brainer for me. Like that's my guy. So that's how I ended up there. For me, I was going to go to University of Portland, even without playing. Then I had a really good state tournament my senior year. And so the coach that was recruiting me from another school, Warner Pacific, his brother was the assistant at University of Portland. So when I told him I wasn't going to go to Warner Pacific, he's like, oh, well, do you want me to recommend you to my brother that's the assistant at Portland? So shout out Tal Wold. Rich Wold was the assistant at Portland. So I got the chance to play because of the connection through that. So what's, how'd you get on rim? I had a, uh, well, I was going to go play for Coach Lunt um, and was set on that. And uh, things at Gonzaga kind of, they had a unique year where guys weren't that happy. They didn't win as many games as they usually do. So they had a big number of transfers uh, take off. They had a big senior class and they were low on numbers. And I knew Coach Tommy Lloyd uh, because he played against my dad. Um, when my dad was coaching, he was at our Crosstown Rival. And Tommy had seen me at Gonzaga camp, stuff like that. So he had me come for a six-week period in the summer, take class and go to their summer workouts to see if I could make something happen. And uh, I got there and I stuck. I did five years. I even redshirted. So um, crazy how it played out. It was really crazy. But because I spent that whole senior year not knowing what I was going to end up doing. Um, but I'm very fortunate to have that relationship with Coach Lloyd. I thank him to this day because who knows where I'd be um uh, you know if if I didn't go there but yeah, University of Puget Sound was my number one that's for sure and going and playing for Coach Lunt I don't know if I had the cardio to play for him <laughs> you'd have to go hard for about a minute minute and a half maybe you'd have to go hard though yeah no question let's see notable wins we beat when I was there I don't know if he's trying to rub this back in Rim's face but we did beat Gonzaga one time <laughs> They have beat them once since then, but not at Gonzaga. I think they're like 19 in a row at home against the Pilots. We also beat Oregon State at Gill Coliseum down in Corvallis. Um, but we never made the national tournament, never got to cut down nets. I never got to start a game, but I had a role. I had a uniform. I got to travel. I played when we beat Pepperdine, played at San Diego, Loyola Marymount. That talk about a great road trips, right, Rim? The conference. Heck yeah, it's a lot better than Stillwater, Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma, West Virginia. The trips I'm making now, I miss going to the beach on Thursday, Saturday travel games. Baylor, Baylor's. I mean, you're gonna our conference is led. a lot better, and it's legendary. But the towns aren't Ames, Iowa. It's a little different than uh, Malibu. LA, Malibu, yeah. Malibu and San Diego for sure. Yeah. Let's see. What's the best atmosphere you've been to? I got to go with at Kansas. Kansas? If, if I'm not saying Gonzaga, we played at Kansas this year uh, with Baylor and we beat him for the first time in Coach Drew's history, uh, which was unreal just going into their place and winning the tradition, the history. And they had a great team this year. So that that was the craziest atmosphere I've been in in college basketball. Yeah, if, if I'm not saying DePaul, then I got to take MSG for the Big East tournament. You want to talk about loud. You want to talk about all types of people. You want to talk about as you're leaving the games, like people are trying to talk to you and get autographs and whatnot. Like that is the pinnacle of college basketball. And like, I can't imagine it getting much crazier than that, honestly, at this level. So Madison Square Garden, I got to give it to them. They take the cake. I'm going with – I'm torn between – I got to play in two really pretty – Gonzaga, and then there's this other one in North Carolina called um, Cameron. We, because they used to – they played because of Mike Dunleavy Jr. Duke came out and played in Portland the year before I got to Portland. And then my sophomore year, we went back and played at Duke. So that was – Duke, the Cameron Crazies, that atmosphere. I didn't play, so I don't know if I said play. I might have misspoke. I got to sit on the bench. Even though we were down a lot, the coach didn't let me get any run. And that was a little bit tough as a walk-on. You know, you feel like we're down by 
30. Like, how can I do much worse, you know? But I got Did the you play with Casey Franson? Casey Franson's, yeah, Casey Franson was on the team both years Eat I was. Bucket. He averaged 20 a game as a sophomore in the West Coast Conference. He used to come back and play open gym with us. And, oh, my gosh, he used to give us buckets. Casey Franson could serve him up, man. He was, he was a bucket, still is. Yeah, he really is. So let's see. What about the Zags culture? The Lunt wants to talk about the Baylor locker room compared to the Zags locker room. Compare those. Yeah, uh, very different. Um, just because Gonzaga is getting pockets of people from international uh, basketball, so you have that aspect with it. Um, and we have a few guys uh, international at Baylor, but it's not the same type of deal. Um, Gonzaga, we, they really weren't taking junior college transfers. Um, kind of the wave was grad transfers, so guys who would come in, play a year, and then just fit into the system. Baylor, we're trying to do that now, uh, but still they've only had one grad transfer in the history of their program. Um, since I got to Baylor, I came because of Coach John Jacobs, who was at Gonzaga, and him and I together have tried to instill a lot of Zag standards and Zag things we did because we know the importance of team, locker room, and winning. And, uh, you know, Baylor was really player-driven this year. There was three guys uh, who all started. They were all all-conference, but they all redshirted last year. And they kind of set the trend and, and made it really cool to be in the gym at all times and be working out. Macy Oteague, Davion Mitchell, Freddie Gillespie. Freddie Gillespie actually happened to be a walk-on from D3 in Minnesota, um, Carleton College, I believe. And, uh, you know, Baylor was very player-led um, and just kind of, this is the way I'm going to do it. And everybody caught on and they, they pushed the work ethic to another level. Gonzaga was a culture that was instilled the second you get there from the coaches um, down to the walk-ons, managers, and everybody was on the same page. But I witnessed a shift in it with Baylor because of the three players. That's so great huge. answer. Like one, one, uh, one thing that I really admire is that culture, like from, from one to 15, uh, I got to give them credit where credit is due. They have given us some beat downs over the past couple of years that have been a part of the program, but Villanova has some of the best culture I have seen. Like these guys, oh, yeah. you want to talk about like, man, the, you know, pregame when whatever, everybody's shooting around, like even an hour and a half before the game, you know, everyone's out on the court getting their shots up and whatnot. Walk-ons are rebounding for them. They have a unit of walk-ons. Like, I'm talking about efficiently, like, doing everything. It looks like a, like some kind of machine. It's insane. Everybody on the same page, all clapping at the same time. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Like, uh, it's, it's Tim, I love Tim. Yeah, Tim was there, uh, Coach Lunt. I just saw you mentioned Tim. Tim was there this year. We played him at Myrtle Beach. Um, and just to go off what you're saying, like everybody's yelling the same things, like pumping each other up. Everybody's helping each other get shots up. And we played them down to the wire. Uh, we actually beat them this year. But Gillespie, man, that guy's a stud. He is a stud. And they play with so much space. And, uh, they're a fun team, man. Man, they go out there and just – they play basketball the way basketball is supposed to be played. I'm in the Big East, so I shouldn't be, you know – Hype it up, but I got to him twice next year again, and I hope they don't do what I'm talking about right now. But no, they are a program. That's a program right there. Jump stop, shot fake. Yeah, they were oh. so tough to prepare for. Catch and shoot, catch and shoot. You're never as open as when you first catch it. Attitude. They talk a lot about attitude. Definitely one of the best for sure. They broke mm -hmm. a big East record this year when we played against them. I think they shot. If it wasn't 70, it was like 69 or 68 percent from three against us. And they shot like, <laughs> like no, they shot like a ridiculous amount of threes too. It was like over twenty five threes. And these guys were like lighting it up. It was crazy at our home court too. So we were like, oh great, thanks. Okay, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, is there anybody else that's got anything they want to ask these guys? We can we can log off or we can sign off here in a second, and we can just. I got I got a question. Shoot it out. How do you pronounce it? Pantelis, Pantelis, Pantelis. Like I've heard every person in the world say it a different way, but I haven't yeah, heard you, come out you of your mouth. So I appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's Pantelis, but most people Pantelis. just Yeah, almost everyone just calls me Pont. Pont. All right. 
I, I needed to know that for the future. Yeah. And, it's, oh, and it's, it's the last name, Zidias. Oh, that I wasn't was even about that. That's nice, actually. That, that's good. Zidias. Zidias, yeah. Pantelis Zidias. Man, if, if everybody could say it like you do, I'd be in good shape. <laughs> Unique names, man. They run the world. Ram Bakamis, right? Bakamis, yeah. Bakamis, Ram Bakamis, okay. But everybody says Bakamis, 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 but it is Bakamis. I'll remember that. I understand yeah. your uh, dilemma, so I'm going to make right. it a point of emphasis to say it right. And it's uh, Brant Minor, right? It's pronounced, it's pronounced Minor. Yeah, Minor. It's French. Minor. That's yeah. so. B minor, no one finer. Well, we'll go ahead and say that if you're going to walk, Walk on. Oh, I'm better. Walk on. Do it again. Do it again. If you're going to walk, walk, walk on. on. There we go. Bingo. Good stuff. Right, We're going to stop it.